Hello and welcome to Upside Down. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you a quick and easy trick that I use when it comes to rigging environment assets. We are not only going to make some controls and rig the asset, but also I'll show you how this can help you speed up your animation process for environment props. Let's start the video. So I already made this very simple door with uh, some mechanism on top of it. So what I would like to do is have those two pieces together and then first we are going to move those out of the way before moving and opening the doors. So I'll show you how you can pair a couple of them with a controller which will simplify a lot and speed up a lot your animation process. What I usually use for controllers are splines. So what I'm going to create first is going to be one rectangle, which is going to be for our door. So I'm going to make one over here and let's make it a square. I'll make it 0.3, 0.3. And I'm gonna move it a little bit forward so that it doesn't intersect with our door. And also I'm going to clone this one more time on the other side. And let's keep the coordinates on the X axis exactly on the same place. So this I'm going to put it on 0.3 and this one as well, I'm going to make it on 0.3, right? So this is going to be for one of our doors. The other one is going to be for the other door. Now I'm going to make a controller, which is going to be for our pipes. So for those, I'm going just to create simple arrows. Great, I'm gonna leave it as this and point it to the 0.7. So I'm going to clone one more time the same arrow and just rotate it 90 degrees. And again, we are gonna put it into 0.7 so that they are on the same place. Now we have already all the controllers that uh, we want to have for our scene. And the thing that I'm going to do, you can see that the whole door at the moment is in different elements. So we are not going to anyhow combine them, merge them or anything like this. So what I'm going to do is select first the ones that I want to pair with this element and what I'm going to do is select it and then I'm going to go here into select and link and click drag it all the way to the square that we want to pair it with I'll do the same with our front element so dragging it here then this part I'm going to pair it with this side and then those pipes I'm going to put in each of the arrows so now if I select any of the controlling elements, you can see that this one moves those two elements together. This one moves this element. And for example, if I select those, I can pull both of them together. And this way it makes it very easy to control and edit and create animations. So if I want to, for example, make an opening for the door, what I'm going to need to do is just select and uh, let's say these are the first elements that we want to move. So I'm going to put a key on zero and then I'm going to move it on 30th frame and here I'll just move it to 1.5 this is a little bit too much so it will be 1.2 and I'll do the same for the other one 1.2 so this is first part of the animation once these are opened then we can get those two elements and I'm going to move them like let's say to 45 this one goes like this and this one goes like this perfect so now we have already the animation and everything done for our door and now it comes the biggest advantage to why i like to use this method and why i left the assets as they are not detailed so what we can do is select some of them and edit our design. So for example, let's say we want to change how the doors look like. I can put an editable poly and then we can come and add a couple of different edges. And then we are selecting those two. Uh, let's, make, let's make a few cuts like that. So after that, we select those two. And here we can make a bevel, edit it the way that we want it. And the best part is still that our controllers and everything is still 
hooked together and it works perfectly well. So we can now start designing, updating whatever we want the looks of our door to be. And as well, we can start adding some modifiers and whatever else we want to some of the elements. So the best part is that now everything is separated on its own. So we can easily do any kind of modifications and even apply turbo smooths or all the other stuff without disrupting our animation, without breaking our control system, and as well without being anyhow restricted into being inside some type of a selection like an element or that we need to worry that some of the modifiers that we apply might not be suitable for some of the elements that we have in that asset. There is one more reason why this skill is very handy. So it's especially useful if you have lots of elements on the asset that you are modeling. Because then if you would like to change something in your animation and movement, you don't have to go one by one and change every single one of them, but instead you just need to change the animation of the controller, or you can remove some of the elements from the controllers and add them to another one, and then they are going to move together with a different part of your animations. So it makes it very, very easy to do any kind of iterations and changes. Thank you for joining me in today's tutorial. I hope that these skills will come useful, like the video and subscribe to my channel to follow more tutorials.